Hello everybody. Today in this video we're going to take a look at how to create smoke and steam using N particles in Maya. So the first thing I want to do is set my timeline to the uh, number of frames that I want for this uh, N particle example. Here I'm going to set it to 600 frames. The second thing I want to do is set my preferences. If I click on the running man to the lower right of my interface, it'll open up the preferences where I can set my playback speed. When you're working with N particles, you want your playback speed to be set to play every frame. This is very important when working with N particles. Next, I want to go to the upper left of my user interface. And instead of using the modeling tools, I'm going to set it to effects. Now I'll go to N particles, create options. I want it to be set to cloud because we're going to be making smoke. And with that set, I'll go back to N particles and create emitter. I'm going to open up the tool settings and reset it so it just uses the standard default settings. Whenever working with particles, make sure to rewind your timeline to frame one. I'll now hit the play button and see what we've got. Notice that if I try to scrub in my timeline, I will get an error message in the lower right of my interface. To properly see your end particles, you need to play them. Let's open up our outliner and see what we have in our scene. Notice that in our scene, we have three new nodes. We have an emitter node, an N particle node, and a nucleus node. I'd like to briefly talk about these three nodes. The emitter is what emits the particles. Think of it as the nozzle on a water hose. The emitter is where I adjust parameters such as the speed which my particles come out, uh, as well as the number of particles that come out. The end particle, on the other hand, is like the water that comes out of the nozzle of my garden hose. And it is under the end particle node that I would adjust such things as the look of my, my particles, as well as the way that they behave, their size, their lifespan, and so on. And finally, the nucleus node. The nucleus node is like the environment which my particles exist in. It is under the nucleus node where I could adjust such things as gravity, uh, as well as wind. While not necessary, I uh, prefer to rename these nodes. So I'm going to call my emitter smoke emitter, and I'll call my end particle smoke end particle. And to create our smoke effect, we'll start with the emitter. With my emitter selected, I will go to my attribute editor and adjust the rate particle per second. It was set to 100, and now I've set it to a very low number. Now let's try setting it to a higher number. And here you can see the effect of changing the rate particle per second on our emitter. <laughs> 
I'm going to set it back to 100 so that it will emit 100 particles per second, or 100 particles per 24 frames. I can also change the emitter type. It was set to Omni, which emits particles in all directions, to Directional, which will emit particles in only one direction. The default is on the x-axis. But because we're making smoke and I want the smoke to rise up, I'm going to change direction y to 1 and direction x to 0. And now my end particle system, now the emitter, emits the end particles up on the y-axis. And by adjusting the spread attribute of my emitter, I can make the uh, particles emit in the y direction but fan out. For my smoke effect, I'll bring it to about right here. I can also change the rate or speed that the particles emit from, uh, from my emitter. Notice that I can play the simulation and interactively scrub and adjust to find the right rate or speed that I desire. I'll bring it to around 2. I can also add a little bit of randomization to the speed. Now that we've adjusted the parameters on the emitter, let's move on to the end particle node. I will select it and then go once again to my attribute editor. Currently my n my n particles are set to live forever. See what happens if I change their lifespan mode from live forever to constant with a setting of 1. Now my particles only live for 1 second or 24 frames in this case. By adjusting the lifespan I can make these particles live for a longer period of time or a shorter period of time. Currently I have them set to live for six seconds. A very similar setting to constant, but one that I actually prefer, is random range. I'm going to set my particles to live for four seconds but then add some randomization to that. Uh, randomization number of one, perhaps, which will make some live for three seconds, others for five seconds, and anywhere in between those two numbers. Under particle size, we can change the size of our particles. I'm going to change the radius and make my particles larger or smaller. I can also introduce an element of randomness to this property. And under radius scale, I can change the size of my n particles over time. I'm going to make my n particles start out small. And then towards the end of their lifespan, life they'll become larger. And under radius scale input, I recommend changing this from age 
to normalized age. You will tend to get better results with this setting. Play around with the radius scale and see what other kinds of effects you can create over time. If I make my end particles become, uh, let's say they start out large and then they become smaller over time, that gives a very different effect. This might work for creating fire, for example. Or I could make my particles become smaller and larger, smaller and larger repeatedly over time, and this could work out well for perhaps a magic spell. But since I'm going to try to create a smoke effect, I'm going to set it back to the way I had it before, making the particles start out small and get larger over time. With my end particles still selected, I'm going to go in my attribute editor uh, down to the shading section. You can adjust the opacity in a very similar way to the uh, size that we had done just moments ago. Notice that I can bring the opacity down and it makes it more transparent. I bring it up and it becomes more opaque. And once again, of course, I can change these values over time. I'm going to have my end particles start out transparent, become more opaque, and then gradually over time become more and more transparent until they disappear. Notice that I can also change the interpolation of these keys. I can make them linear, or I can make them use a spline, I can make them be smooth. I'm going to change the opacity scale input from age to normalized age, and I th think you will see that I immediately get a better result. And just like the size of our end particles and the opacity of our end particles, we can also change the color of them over time. And just like opacity and the radius, this is done with a ramp. Perhaps a grayscale ramp will work better for my smoke effect. And of course you can return to some of the other parameters that we looked at earlier and fine-tune and adjust them to get the effect that you want. For instance, here I'm going back and changing the size of my particles. So we've looked at the emitter node, which emits the particles. And we've looked at the end particles, which gets emitted. Now that we've looked at those two nodes, let's move on to the third node, the nucleus node. Remember that this node represents some of the environmental conditions. I'm going to um, adjust the wind speed. And of course, I can also adjust the direction of the wind. And adding a little bit of wind noise will create a bit of randomness uh, regarding the direction.
There's one more thing I'd like to show you, and for this I'm going to create a polygon cube. Now that I've created my polygon cube, I'm going to go to end cloth create passive collider. Notice that my end particles collide with this geometry now. So that does it for my demonstration of creating smoke and steam using end particles. One thing I recommend when using end particles is to render it out, render out a frame, for example, to see what the effect actually looks like. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.